Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at something called aspect. Now aspect is uh, definitely one of those things that you're probably familiar with, and it basically refers to the angle by which you're approaching a particular object. Now inside of uh, military simulations like we have over here in command, aspect is a very, very critical component of many, many engagements, but it's one of those things that kind of gets relegated to, oh, it's not really that big of a deal, I see the trucker pull the trigger kind of a thing like that. So let's go ahead and break that down in detail here and kind of look at some of the complications that kind of come through with it. So the first things first is that we have ourselves a relatively simple scenario here. Again, I just built this just for the purposes of kind of demonstrating some of these different aspects. <laughs> so one of the things we have now is this new short airfield for tactical support and just a really, really quick pro tip. If you want to use this, you're actually going to have to go ahead and toss in some way for the aircraft that are at the field to get on to the actual uh, ski jump and stuff like that. But it is cool that they finally added one of those. I like that touch. So what we're going to do is that we're going to use our F-15E, or F, well, wow, I'm going to talk about one of the eagles that have used me too many times, our F-15A eagle to go ahead and attack our bogey. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my eagle, shift F1, click on the bogey, and you're going to notice here that it shows us some interesting information. Now, first things first, we're carrying the 9 Juliet Sidewinder, and you're also going to observe the fact that it says that uh, we're out of range, which is definitely a problem. So we'll go ahead and get a little bit closer here. Do, 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 I'm just kind of, kind of do my thing, cruising the range here. This guy will never see me coming. Oh, picked up something else out there somewhere. Do, 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 just make my way over into range. Ah, there we are. We're beautifully in range now. Fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and press Shift F1. I'm going to go ahead and order that attack one more time. And you'll notice here that I am out of aspect. It says uh, two degrees is out of the envelope of the rear aspect weapon. That's because of the Juliet version of the Sidewinder and many, many early air, air infrared missiles cannot target things that it can't see well. So in this particular case, our handy dandy Juliet Sidewinder has actually got itself a situation where it has to be in the rear of the target in order to engage it. So even though it's possible to get a lock, you're probably not gonna get a reliable hit on the target itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and now uh, do a couple quick things here. Control theft of nine, I'm gonna go switch this to no reply to course. It's kind of a critical component. Click on my eagle, I'm gonna go ahead and select my bomber here and I'm gonna let him kind of do his thing here. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna step up to afterburner speed and start to approach this target uh, basically on a front end aspect now if i wanted to do a cheap shot here uh, what i could do is actually use the guns on him basically try to take a passing shot on him it's uh, kind of one of the fun strategies you can use that sometimes you get away with uh, again i don't think i'll be able to get away with this shot here we shall try but like i said every once in a while you can get oh there it is ah i missed him <laughs> So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn around. You're going to notice there are bullets pouring out of the back of this enemy bomber right here. And they actually took some pretty close shots on our eagle. Now, what did you, you're sitting there going, wait, what? Well, believe it or not, this is a bison. And uh, one of the reasons I pulled this particular aircraft out is because it has a rear aspect firing weapon. If you actually come up here, you'll notice here that it's got its little 23 millimeter cannon on the back and it faces the back. And you're like, why would it face the back? Actually, it makes perfect sense because our eagle here, who just fired, by the way, you'll notice that we were able to go ahead and get a round off at this particular target um, is well within the engagement profile of this. So we'll let them go ahead and fire some uh, sidewinders here. Now, one of the things you'll find very interesting here is the sidewinder shot to the back does not work very well. <laughs> There's a lot of meat on that aircraft that's in the back of it. And uh, firing these little tiny 6.5 kilogram overheads here is not going to do much to it. As a matter of fact, you can see that's our third hit. So one of the other downsides of rear aspect attacks is first of all, your target is running from your missiles, which limits your range. Notice by the way, our range here. The second thing it does, of course, is it opens you up to people while firing from that direction. And then lastly, um, hitting things from the back doesn't do as much damage as hitting things from other directions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open the scenario back up again. Yes, I need to name all my scenarios the same thing. It's just simple that way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab my eagle and we're going to replace my eagle with a more modern eagle here. I will do an F-15A, but we'll grab a nice 1995 with the Baz version. Cool. Let's grab that. And now we're going to grab ourselves uh, some sparrows. That looks pretty good to me. I'm not actually going to fire the sparrows. We're just going to have the sparrows sort of on hand, so to speak. Uh, one of the things I actually like to do is to come in here like this. And then what you can do is you can come to the sparrows. You can actually get rid of them. And the advantage there, of course, is we're not going to get an accidental there. So what I'm gonna do is the same thing we did last time. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to be ignore plotted course. I like that. I'm gonna click on my eagle, F1, and just like that. And what he's gonna do, of course, now he's gonna spin up all sorts of afterburner goodness, and he's gonna come rushing at our target. Now, the AIM 9M, uh, not to be confused with the P. By the way, with AIM 9s, the letter, it, it's, it's complicated. Different letters mean different things. It doesn't mean that M is 
necessarily better than p or p is better than m vice versa you have to actually kind of be careful with that of course the x is going to be the best of the sidewinders but what you're going to notice is we have a couple of uh, new toys uh, we have a much much bigger warhead which is definitely handy for us and the other thing of course now is we have the ability to engage a target from the front which is super duper useful you see how it's an anti-air all aspect uh, that's actually really useful for us so what we're going to do is we're going to approach this target from the nose this time and we're going to take a pot shot down the barrel and uh, things are going to get kind of interesting this time and you'll see exactly why because now that we're approaching it in our shot, that increases our effective range. Because if we were to fire now, by the time the missile got to this point, our target would have already gotten to that point, which now means that we have less time for the engagement, which gives him less time to maneuver. It also means our weapon now is at traveling at a much, much higher speed. So I'll press Shift F1, I'll go ahead and select him real quickly. We're a little outside the DLZ range here, which is, doesn't surprise me. That simply means um, if we were dealing with other types of targets, they could potentially outmaneuver it. But even then, a few seconds later, we go pop one of these things off, and that was a pretty good range too. That was about six or seven miles. So the Sidewinder, these are dogfighting missiles. They come ripping, and they're coming right into the front of the aircraft this time. Now, believe it or not, uh, even though these guys are slowing down rapidly, this bomber can't do a thing. And they're going to basically take those Sidewinders right off the nose there. And then, of course, we're going to have to fire a third Sidewinder. And you can see that made quite a mess of things. Actually, we just got that cheap shot. <laughs> just the pass. Now, you're probably sitting there going, how did that airplane survive that? I'm actually asking the same kind of question there. Again, because this is a big, very, very, very beefy aircraft that is quite durable. And again, that's one of the reasons I like about it is that all the engines and stuff are kind of in the middle here, which makes it a tougher shot. So now you're probably sitting there going, okay, I think I see exactly where you're going to go next. And I said, yeah, you're right. So a front aspect is one of the best shots that you can take against aircraft because it limits the maneuvering capabilities and it's very difficult to outturn it. But what happens when you get a side aspect? Uh, that's when we enter the land of the deflection shots. So let's go ahead and grab ourselves a Saudi Arabian F-15 here. I will do the Sierra Sidewinder, which is actually kind of interesting because notice we have M's. I'm sorry, we have just Sierras. I like that. Grab that one. I'm going to go ahead and order him to basically go like this. Go ahead, unpause. I'll, um, we can see him directly. Actually, what I'll do is I'll be nice to everybody and put him right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a side aspect shot. Now, side aspect shots are kind of interesting because what happens now is our missile has actually got to travel a significant lead on the target that we're attempting to engage here. So let me go ahead and I'll finish up my turn here and line ourselves up so that we're basically taking a side aspect shot here. Now, these are tricky, 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 tricky shots because now we've got a lot of physics working against us here to make this a more Boy, hey. Now, one of the safest ways to do that, by the way, is you can just delete the missile if you're trying to demonstrate some. Oh, there goes another one. Ah, that's the sparrow. Perfect. So our sparrow now is initially going to travel towards the target. And then what we're going to see is because we're taking this huge side aspect is that our weapon is actually going to start turning and throwing itself into a lead against our weapon. Now, notice, by the way, this is in real time. Uh, sparrows are that quick. So you'll notice uh, it should have probably put a little more lead on him, but it creamed him. Now you're sitting there going, wow, that was the first time you've actually gotten a hit that actually killed something. But the reason if we actually flip to the other side and take a look at this, you're going to notice that parts of the bomber that were struck here. Uh, we can see the initial hit here. Uh, we took a bunch of damage. We lost a radio. We lost our SPO. We lost one of our engines right away. We lost one of other engines. Uh, let's see, that one crashed. Uh, let's see, we have some more component damage. Uh, the radio radios are gone. We can go take a look at here. That one got blasted. The other engine got blasted. That engine got blasted. And you can see there that our crew decided to immediately get out of here because it ran out of functioning engines because our weapon struck them where the engines are versus the nose versus the tail. So you can already start to see why this starts to get a complicated problem. Now, the problem gets more complicated. So let's go ahead and uh, get rid of our F-15 here. And uh, we have ourselves a handy-dandy skunk. Um, of course, it's... Not just a skunk, it's something I put out there for the purposes of whack whacking here. Let's get ourselves an F-18C. Actually, yeah, we'll use the C today. Go ahead and get ourselves a 2014 flavor. And we want the, uh, let's see, actually, we'll take the harpoon, the nicer harpoon. We'll grab that one right there. Uh, because the nicer harpoon is just a little tiny bit easier to use. There we go, cool. So what does this mean for ships? Well, it's actually the same kind of problem that you're going to have with aircraft. And where we try to strike the ship is going to have a big impact on how easy it is to detect. It's going to have a huge impact on the fact that um, when the weapon arrives, what's it going to target? So to demonstrate that concept, what we're going to do is we're going to use this F-18C here to actually engage our handy-dandy target that we have down below. And our goal here, of course, is to see what happens. So first things first, 
uh, we're on basically a nose aspect here, front front here. We've got a slight deviation as this uh, particular ship is actually moving to a kind of improve our little whatevers here. I'm actually going to pull ourselves up just a little bit to make it a clean front shot here. So I'm going to press Shift F1, click on my target. I'm going to go ahead and pop off two harpoons here. And of course, it's going to yell at me saying you have to be at a lower altitude. Fine. And there we go. Cruising on down. And you just got to get low enough. There goes one. There goes two. And that's it. He's off. Boop. So now what we have is we have a nose shot. Now, from a ship's perspective, this is a, one of the worst places to be attacked from because most weapon systems and most fire control towers that you actually have on ships are going to be designed to kind of face off your beams here. So these two weapons here, this is actually perfect. So our missiles are coming in. Uh, they're moving very, very quickly here. And now where this is going to get interesting is that we're actually dealing with a carrier target. And a carrier target is going to be kind of fun here because of the fact that it has a very, very, very long nose. One of the things I can actually do here is I can turn this carrier a little bit so that it can kind of see it. Now, most of its anti-aircraft weapons, of which it has none, by the way, this is a training aircraft carrier, they actually have those, are going to have a really, really tough time because of the fact that these missiles are going to be coming off the nose. Of course, since this one has no ESM to detect the fact that all these harpoon missiles, you can see them doing a little happy harpoon dance here, um, are not detected. We're actually going to have to use a visual detection to actually spot those incoming weapons, which again makes it even more challenging. Oh, and we just get smacked in the nose all of the sudden with absolutely no warning. So let's see what happened here. So uh, we took a shot right off the nose. Uh, we got there was two harpoons that struck us, I believe. Uh, we lost the component. We uh, damaged, and of course that other one uh, nailed us right on the nose. We have an armor penetration as well, 100%. Let's see what it did. So let's go open up our damage control real quickly here. I'm being blind. There it is. And carry magazines fine. Sensors are fine. Uh, data links are fine. Air facilities. Um, usually you damage the deck when you hit off the nose there. But you can see we basically clunk right off the bow. Probably shot the anchor off or something like that. And this. Looking good, looking good, no problem. Because again, the weapons hit from the nose. So let's go ahead and go uh, switch back to the other team there. And we'll go ahead and grab ourselves another one of those handy dandy F-18s. And we're now gonna go ahead and take a side aspect shot here. Now from the ship's perspective, this is going to be ideal because it's gonna have the easiest time detecting and engaging the incoming weapons. Uh, from our perspective, it's not ideal because of that, but since we are taking a side shot, we have a different part of the ship exposed that we're actually going to be engaging with our weapons. Let's go ahead and flip on our handy radar there, make it a little bit easier to detect. And we can already see we were picking them up with the tarps there. That's kind of interesting. Finish that flip around. We should get a pretty confident aim at where this guy is right now. Looks pretty good. Yep. So now we're going to take the side aspect shot. So this is going to be hitting the broadest part, the most detectable part of the ship, I should also add here. So we're going to pop those two off. I'll go ahead and delete him because he's done a nice job there. And those two weapons are going to come cruising on down here, making their thing. Well, we only fired one, but that's perfectly fine. I deleted him too soon. That's cool, though, because um, you'll still be able to see the effect of taking these shy shots. Now, from a radar detection perspective, this is perfect for us because now we have a huge side of a target to detect. And again, ships are like trying to detect buildings. They're very, 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 I love that little trick, by the way. Um, very, 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 very obvious. So we'll keep on moving here. Our carry, of course, normally would have sensors uh, keeping an eye on that direction. And all this triple A would have all afternoon and the sea whiz would just be opening up and having a happy time of it. But unfortunately, we didn't expect that. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, our little lookout on the side is going to be like, what's that little white speck that's a couple feet off the... Oh, and we took that harpoon shot right to the side of the ship. Now, if we go up to damage control, there's a couple of things you'll probably notice. Uh, the first one is our damage has spiked up to 21.7%. It's done about the same amount of damage the first one did. Of course, it hit us across the side. Now, you'll notice one of our high-frequency radios was knocked out. Now, in the real world, of course, uh, the tower is on the left side. So a lot of times your radio damage is going to be inflicted if you hit up and over on that side. But we didn't have that. But the rest of the ship is perfectly fine. So again, even though it was easier target to hit, and you notice our harpoons had a much easier time of actually detecting the carrier to do the thing, it was not able to really deliver a killing, killing blow, or at least causing real damage here. So we'll go ahead and uh, switch sides again. We'll go grab blue, and now we'll try a rear aspect shot on this particular one. We'll get the same exact weapon types. Um, we'll keep it honest here and only fire a single harpoon. Again, try to make it fair. I'll grab a harpoon too. That looks pretty good to me. We'll look in this general direction, and of course, now we have some new problems that we're going to have to compete with. Uh, one of them, of course, is uh, now that we're chasing after our targets, we would have the issue that we'd have to put up with having basically... Uh, that's the best way. We have to shoot sooner because otherwise the target will move out of the way of the effective range of the weapon. But with ships, you usually don't have to deal with that too, too much because they're ships. They're kind of kind of big, kind of slow. So you don't have to deal with those things too. Unless they're dealing with a shield or something like that. So go ahead and take one shot with harpoon. 
Now we're going to attempt the rear aspect shot here. So the rear aspect shot, again, against the ship, this is an optimum place to hit it a lot of times because basically you're sneaking up on the ship and that's going to give them a little less time to respond, assuming they're not looking in that direction. Notice, of course, we have flip on our little uh, surface radar here. We have no difficulty tracking the target, especially if the target accidentally starts turning on us or something like that. Um, they're never ever going to be able to see this thing coming from the rear. Now, a rear shot is kind of an odd shot too because a lot of times in the back of the boat, that's where you're going to have things like your helipads. Uh, that's where you're going to have stuff like uh, some of your weapons systems, your VLS is usually in the back, you're very unlikely to get a propeller or rudder hit like this. Uh, the reason being is the anti-ship missiles generally hit pretty high. So again, we can see that it slams into the back of our carrier there. Click on him, a couple things you'll notice. Uh, he's at 32.5%, so again, it added about 10% damage. This is why I like the harpoon. It's absolutely doo-doo as far as uh, causing damage goes. Go to our damage control here, and you can see that it did a significant amount of damage to the air facilities. So if you wanted to sort of interpret where this missile landed, most likely what it did is it came down and sort of dropped onto the top of the deck and hit it. Oh, we have no fire, however, oh, which is uh, very interesting. But you can see that one missile completely crippled the ship's ability to basically launch and recover aircraft. And again, it's not completely disabled. It's a reduced capacity, which just means it's going to take a lot longer. But you can see things like our engineering and propulsion are going a lot quicker. So as we can see, when it comes to ships, uh, it's a little willy-nilly as far as um, a missile hitting. Now, if we hit these guys with torpedoes from the rear aspect, that would be a different story. So what we're going to do now is now we're going to attack this particular platform with a missile that is designed to drop into the center. Yes, we've got front, we've got side, we've got rear, but with targets this large, we also have the top and the bottom that we can strike. So we're going to bust out a backfire. This is a Tupolev 22. This is a, one of the TU-22s. The other one is the TU-22A. That is not the same thing as the TU-22M. They're very, very, very different aircraft, even though they have the same general kind of configuration. Now, the reason I really, really love this missile, and this is a KH-22, by the way, is the missile is called a Kitchen, is because it's ridiculously, stupidly awesome. What it does is it basically goes, whoop, turns around, and goes, oh, and comes back. I know that sounds like a technical term there, but um, when you see what it does, I'll switch it to tack view so you can watch it in action. It is the definition of a um, fire up and let it come back down to orbit sort of weapon. I'll show you what I mean here. Let's go switch on a 3D view. I'm gonna pop that one up real fast. Let's go ahead and unpause. I love this weapon. This is so cheap. Watch this, watch this. <laughs> now the harpoon is like, e -de 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 -de. this thing's like, ha -ha, watch me hit a satellite on the way up kind of a thing like that. Oh, going up. Of course, I would let attack view kind of catch up. Okay, let me slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. So our weapon just hit the peak of its orbit, and uh, now it's uh, coming back down. And as you can see here from our aspect, we're hitting it kind of off the nose. And the other thing we're doing, as you can probably observe, is we're coming back down, is we're pretty high up. So this aspect on this particular target, I mean, I wish it dropped a little bit straighter like some of the ballistic missile versions of this. It's going to hit pretty high. So you're going to get kind of a middle sort of side is what we're seeing from this perspective. So let's go ahead and close that out. So we'll switch over to red real quickly here. Again, blissfully aware, uh, no fires. Uh, of course, the hangar facilities are all dented up all sorts of nasty. And then we have this thing, which is dropping in from orbit. It's uh, 23,000 feet, pushing about 1,600 knots. It's just kind of swinging in again. These things are so much fun to shoot. I love how it's 1970s technology too. And we got a little tiny warning as somebody looks up and says, hey, what's that? As this thing that comes slamming down. And again, you can see this is mostly a front aspect, but what it'll probably do is it'll hit, yeah, you can see it's about 1,500 feet right. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention this was uh, 1970s technology. Let me get another one of those. Well, that worked. <laughs> Sorry about that. It, uh, because of the way the recording worked, I missed it. So um, that was our TU-22's missile, the uh, kitchen, which went right into the deck. And uh, you can see that it did some interesting damage. It popped right through the middle here. And you can see 100% penetration achieved. And you can see it did absurd levels of damage to this particular platform here. You can see that uh, not only are we almost completely obliterated here, uh, but we also have fire and we also have flooding. And when I actually open up the screen here, you can see that it definitely hit the middle of the deck there. It blew our carrier catapult, actually probably clipped towards the front there. You can see it annihilated our radios, which happens every time, by the way. And amazingly, our radars only got nicked, which... I swear that never happens. They, they're like usually the first thing to get. And of course, so this particular weapon did nothing to our Westinghouse gear turbines because they're deep underneath the ship. But you can see it absolutely creamed the rest of the upper deck here. And um, I don't think this ship is going to survive. Let's go speed up time here. You can see that the fire and flooding is uh, pretty substantial here, but we still have propulsion, which I'm impressed with. 
So the interesting thing is, uh, for those of you who have not seen this before, uh, when you are taking damage, this creates accumulative damage. And there's this little check that happens every so often where it checks to see how things are going. So if you actually come down here, uh, you can see the fact that um, our leaks are sealed. We actually were able to deal with the leakage. But uh, now we're having a new problem, and that's the fact that we now have a major fire. So what you're going to see here is as this thing is kind of sitting there floundering, that fire is either going to get better or it's going to get worse, but it's constantly doing, I call it like hit point damage to our particular ship here. So you can see our just damage is just slowly rising. Oh, we're getting fire under control. Fire's under control. Fire's under control. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Fantastic. So, um, wow. So this ship is 99% damaged and um, insanely insanely it's still going i guess this is literally the definition of they just don't make them like they used to so i think that lexington uh, deserves a repair there I, I don't think i'm going to be mean and i'll pop another uh, kitchen into the side of it that'd be just rude but it's very very interesting to see just how all these different things come together in a modern naval situation now if you really 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 want to have fun uh, you can experiment with uh, weapons that come from under the water for example you can do different speeds they have especially i think uh, what is it the blinder and stuff like that actually sorry the granite uh, which is a much much later anti-ship missile has a very fun little attack profile but the important thing that i want everybody to take away from is when you do engage your target the angle in which you engage it does make a difference enjoy <laughs>